Is this recording? How does it look? Uh, well, I can't see what it looks like right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and improvise. Um, there was a post um, in the New York Times from Stephen Wilson of the band Porcupine Tree. And I happen to be a pretty big fan of Porcupine Tree. Um, I own one of their best albums, the um, Fear of a Blank Planet. Um, I also purchased a copy of um, Nil Recurring, a digital copy of Nil Recurring from their um, Burning Shed web store, which was a bit more expensive than I'd hoped since it was a British release and I paid American dollars, so you know it was more expensive than a typical digital EP. Um, I also purchased the incident digitally as well, and when Stephen Wilson started um, talking about the, you know, problem with piracy, um, it was a bit offsetting because Wilson approaches the whole subject from the British perspective, and that's not exactly the way it's looked at here because, you know, in, in a smaller continent like Britain, it's not very difficult to get music distributed, and more importantly, the music communities are a lot more, you know, dense. They're more like families. Here in the U.S., every city is its own nation of music, and it's very difficult to get those bands to, you know, really a universal appeal across the city. You know, my, one of my favorite bands is, is a local group called So Many Dynamos, and you, despite being one of the best indie rock bands I've ever heard, you go to, you know, Dallas or you know, Minneapolis, and they don't have a freaking clue who they are, because that's just the way it is in the States, but you go to the the uh, UK, and, you know, a band from Wolverhampton might be just as popular in Manchester, because they're not that far apart. Um, but, but the big problem I had with his whole, you know, debate about piracy, and, and his, really his whole criticism of MP3s and digital music was his obsession with, you know, the artifact, you know, the vinyl. And that's interesting that he brings it up because he kind of seems to imply that that's been lost um, on the current generation, which, you know, um, thinking of myself as being somewhat, you know, representative of, of you know, my age and that generation, I would have to disagree because I, I, I appreciate artifacts as much as anybody else does, you know. And, um, to just kind of give you an example, you know, um, one of my favorite bands of all time is, is Portishead. And, again, a, a British band whose, you know, albums, when they get br um, brought here, are, are pretty expensive, you know. And um, when uh, when Portishead announced that they were making a a, uh, a third album, you know, after, after I had assumed that they had just stopped making music, period, I was excited. And then I found out that they were releasing a limited edition LP box set for this album, um, but it was also going to be um, distributed strictly in the UK, uh, which meant, you know, it would be priced in pounds, and the um, there would be no record label handling it here in the States, uh, which was really frustrating. I ordered it regardless, because that was how dedicated I am to collecting you know, the artifacts of these bands, and, and this is the, the box set that Portis had released, you know, and the reason I purchased it is because it's, it's a great artifact, you know, it's, it's got the, um, you know, it's got the, 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 um, Portis had jump drive right here, which, you know, th this is kind of nice, but what I was really more obsessed with was, was the, um, the vinyl that came with it, because, you know, it, it was, it was, you know, heavy gram, um, it was just the kind of vinyl release that that bands now here in the states don't really do, and he has the advantage again of, of coming from a region where you know vinyl pressings are not that difficult to get across the country. Um, my friend Dan Barrett, um, in Enemies List, he runs a really great record label out of Connecticut. It's it's a pretty bizarre stuff, but it's all pressed um, on vinyl. And he was having some serious difficulties just getting the first pressing of his band's vinyl across the states. I mean, I had to reorder the album a second time because it never showed up. So, you know, distance is important to factor in 
living here in the States, it's easier to download an album than it is to, to try and get a hold of a vinyl record. You know, it's, it's difficult. And it, it's not to say that, you know, um, vinyl is the domain exclusively of, of new music, but the younger generations aren't concerned with older music where vinyl is easier to get a hold of. They really listen to, you know, new things. And it's so difficult to get vinyl pressed and get it shipped and to be able to afford it, it's an investment. Um, and I just, I think that's, that the perspective that which that he pro approached it with was, was just, you know, biased. Um, and that's a shame because, you know, Wilson's a great musician and, um, you know, I respect his opinion when it comes to the creation of music and the way it should be treated, but I, I think he misunderstands the way things work in the States. Um, now, it's possible that I'm just an exception to the rule, but Wilson is a musician in a, um, a style of music that doesn't lend itself to, you know, popular listening. I mean, Porcupine Tree is not a popular band by any measure of, of anybody's worth. And consequently, to expect him to, you know, relate to popular listeners seems kind of weird. Like, why, why did he... Why did he pick, you know, people who listen to, uh, you know, My Chemical Romance as his target? Because that's not the kind of the kind of music he deals with. So, I mean, naturally, the kids who listen to My Chemical Romance don't give, you know, any kind of, you know, shits about the physical format. They don't, because that's just not who they are. But, you know, Stephen Wilson's audience is more appreciative of that, you know, artifact, I think. And... He doesn't realize the reason why it's not popular is because it's just not practical. It, it isn't, not here in the States. Um, and, uh, you know, this is just kind of my way of saying that it's not true. There are pe a lot of people out there who do appreciate the value of, of vinyl and physical releases. It's just we're the minority here in the States. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We just aren't visible. So, yeah, consider that.